the first time that Elijah Muhammad came to New York after I had accepted Islam. Brother Malcolm was alive at that time and his New York minister. The first, it was October 1956. I'm sorry, 55. Elijah Muhammad spoke on two men who were the forerunners to him. Noble Drew Ali was number one, and Marcus Garvey was number two, who were the forerunners to him. Noble Drew Ali was number one, and Marcus Garvey was number two. The forerunners to him. Noble Drew Ali was number one, and Marcus Garvey was number two. Marcus Garvey was number two. Something has happened to us. The native people, from what I read, own 58 million acres of land in what is called the United States. We have over 300, some say over 500 tribes. 58 million acres of land. 3.1 million acres of that land is arable, productive land. And nearly 40% uh, of that is in trust. I don't understand that. 58 million acres and much of it is in trust to the United States government. Do you know what that word trust mean? What does that mean? They hold on to the land and apportion it to our native family as they please? Is that what that means? I can enlighten. Please. I can give you some information on that. It appears as though 150 years ago when we were under constant physical attack, genocidal practices, that once we became, quote unquote, in their eyes, civilized enough to talk to, they told us that we will take your lands and, 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 and you entrust them in us and we'll watch out for you. And that was a trick. Their, their United States Constitution is not theirs. The Iroquois Confederacy from up in New York, six nations, they had the great law of peace. And if you go to your computer and print out the great law of peace and print out the U.S. Constitution and look at them, the parallels are so close. Benjamin Franklin and his thuggish friends befriended the Iroquois Confederacy and tricked them into oh, I'm hearing what you're saying and it makes sense that if we were united then we could eliminate poverty within our own communities that's correct if we were united then we could stop the defamation of Mother Earth if we were united, we could stop pollution in our waters. If we were united, we could bring an end to the pollution that comes from coal 
and digging for oil. If we were united, then we would be able to find the answers that our ancestors had, mine and yours, thousands of years ago, when God told us that we are the caretakers of the earth, we could find the way back to natural living through solar energy that's free, through energy from the water that's free. But as long as there is not a dollar sign tag on it, they're not interested. Because of all the thousands of people that I've met over my years, conversations with people that look like African American people. And when you really get down to the knit and the grit of it and ask them, what's your ancestry? Oh my, my grandma was a Cherokee or my great great grandfather was, I think he was a Seminole. And because of the the stolen heritage of American Indians with black blood and black people with Indian blood, I felt that it was time to bring about a new organization that we, I would like to invite the Nation of Islam, and especially you, my brother, to be a part of who we are because we are already connected by blood. Because all of us are the indigenous people of this planet. Mm -hmm. The yeah. Honorable Eli. You know what, brother? If you were to walk into any mosque in America and you just laid your hands on the first person or the third person or the fifth person, that you see, you realize that you're laying your hands on a Native American? I believe. There were only 8% of the slaves that came to America. So how is it that there are so many more people that they claim are black or African American? I think they got the numbers wrong because a lot of Native Americans are the ones that they're counting as black folks too. Well, we have... You know what, brother? If you were to walk into any mosque in America and you just laid your hands on the first person or the third person or the fifth person that you see, you realize that you're laying your hands on a Native American? I believe. There were only 8% of the slaves that came to America. So how is it that there are so many more people that they claim are black or African American? I think they got the numbers wrong because a lot of Native Americans are the ones that they're counting as black folks too. Well, we're, we're really one. Yeah. We're not yeah. going to let them count this is Native American, this is black. Yeah. Hell no. Mm -mm. We are the original people of the earth. I remember a few years. Golden Age of the Moor by Ivan Van Sertima. Great book. Great book, right? So this is page uh, 93. The 700 years that the Moors dominated the Iberian Peninsula, we weren't just there, we dominated it, mm -hmm. was an era during which many people, mostly of European descent, were either migrated or were brought to the lands of Arabia and North Africa. Although large numbers of blacks were brought from the Sudan during this, that, era, that era, studies of the slave traffic of the time show that numbers of peoples of Slavic, that's where slave comes from, Slavic, and European descent placed into servitude far exceeded the number of Sudanese or other blacks brought and sold by Moors. 
So they always try to say more sold black people, mm -hmm. more sold Africans. Well, first of all, you're more too. Second of all, everybody was being sold. It wasn't about skin tone. It was about status, just like it is today. Yeah. Status. And if you want Morris to apologize, I'll straight up apologize. I apologize for violating our own law and selling our own people into bondage. Meanwhile, today, blacks and Indians who are our very own people are selling us into bondage right now. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about emotional stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you want an apology, there you go. I apologize. Now let's fix the issue. This part played out by European captives or slaves in the making of the modern North Africans and Middle or Near Easterns has been ignored by historians to such an extent that most people are not even aware that such an era ever existed. Most people don't even know that we had them in bondage. No. Because the Europeans taught us that they were this superior power. They didn't Just came into Africa and stole us because they had guns when we invented the gun. Mm -hmm. Right. So here we go. According to James Willard, an author of Lost Worlds of Africa, Muslim Africans, Moors, brought millions of European slaves over the centuries into North African ports of sale. Tangier, Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli, Fez, and Marrakesh, and the northern Egyptian towns. Literally millions were documented as being freed in North Africa by various Christian organizations in Europe. So they would petition. They would like raise major finance to free their European counterparts from our, our bondage. Because mm -hmm. we were doing also, you know, foul shit too, you see? Mm -hmm. But they, the Europeans aren't going to teach you that. Like, yeah. you were in the superior power because you had the Moorish Empire, you were controlling shit. They're not going to teach you that. Because they, they want to create an image of us never being... Ex never being top. anything, so we yeah. won't be anything. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they, they have this subconscious role of their them in the superior uh, position when they... Obviously they weren't. Mm -hmm. And this is a scholar saying this. Not some black leader just talking. Mm -hmm. this, he, he's backing it up with his book. And then he has references. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. And Nature Knows No Color Line, Rogers, J. Rogers, also uh, cites notes of Sir Walter Scott on Spanish Chronicles, which say that European Christians in Spain were forced to pay tribute to the Moors in the form of women, concubines. Right. And this is also why, uh, why in the American Revolution, you know, the Dar, the Daughters of the American Revolution, the mm -hmm. Europeans were revolting against us because we're the Americans. Mm -hmm. See, because we were... Doing stuff to their women, you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Many of the same Europeans brought by the shitload to Africa were sent to America where they remained in indentured servitude. Is that complicated? No. I feel like people get the gist already, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we already established that, you know, black or more means any dark skinned person, right? Mm -hmm. We already established that American means any one of the various copper tone natives found in America, right? We already know that the Olmecs are the most ancient civilization here, right? That's mm -hmm. what people say, right? Yeah. Now, Noble Jali talks about how the true and divine name of Africa is a Mexum, right? Mm -hmm. We already know the continents, all the continents used to be connected. So this would be Northwest of Mexum. Mm -hmm. right? Mexum. They're called the Old Mech. Old Mexum. That's where you get Olmec from. Old? You can also see how you get Mexican from that, too. Mm -hmm. Right? That's where you get Old Mexican. And... Now, in language, the study of this is called morphology. Right? The letters change, but they're the same, mm -hmm. same word. Right? They have the same root. Same root word. That means they are the same word. Mm -hmm. See? That's like, for example, text T E X T versus mm -hmm. text T X T. Mm -hmm. We're doing the same thing. Same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> now, a Mexum is the ancient name of Africa. Right? In words, you have you know the prefix, the suffix, and then the root, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just do this right here. Take that prefix and take that suffix. We have America. Aren't these people copper toned? Mm -hmm. Aren't these people copper toned? Mm -hmm. Okay. Aren't these people copper toned? Yeah. Okay. Now, hold on, let me see. All right, and you have this right here. So the, the Berber word for Morocco is Amuakush. Mm -hmm. Already that phonetically sounds like America, right? Well, we'll just go through this process anyway. <laughs> Right. 
Mulukush. You can already see how that sounds like America. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the Berber word for Morocco. Again, same root word, because vowels, A-E-I-O-U, they're interchangeable. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, al Moroccan. That means descendants of the of the Moroccans, descendants of the Moors, right? Mm -hmm. Same root word, right? Mm -hmm. Transliteration, changing of the letters, right? So you drop this L. That uh, the first vowel changes to a, a, a E. The second changes to an I, and then that C is dropped, right? So you got that changes to an E. Changes to an I. One C is dropped. Is that simple? American. Any? Do you see any? Can any of this? Can you get the word Indian from any of that? No. No. Where is there Indian? India? No Indo. No. But you do have this. The same root word, right? A mare. You get a mare from that. Mm hmm. Same root word, M O M E. Vowels are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. And in, in Egypt, this means water. Water, right? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't feel like spelling water out. <laughs> 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 but let me just do it, just just for people, so they, you know, if they want to take a picture or whatever. And we know, well, if you read, you'll you'll quickly find out that the Dogon or a tribe in, in from the nation of Mali, who was part of the Moroccan Empire. Other Moors have been traveling across the seas for for forever. We're mm -hmm. known as a sea fretting people. Mm -hmm.